Pastor Eric is so old uh, <laughs> that he rested with God on the seventh day of creation. Pastor Eric is so old that he stowed away on Noah's Ark. You're not actually that old, uh, but you are very wise. But that's because he was there when the book of Proverbs was hey. written. <laughs> Welcome to Midweek Mashup. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Midweek Mashup. As you may have guessed, I'm sitting down today with Pastor Eric, uh, who uh, gave a wonderful post-camp message yeah. uh, talking about the youths. The youths. Youths. Not the actual title. Uh, it was Faithful Presence. Yes. But you talked a lot about um, Jesus and, and how he called children yes. to him. You want to tell us a little bit about what you talked about yeah, on Sunday? Yeah, I, uh, I talked about how... Um, but Jesus is um, welcoming of little children and elevating them to the point of saying, like, if you want, <laughs> if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, you have to have faith like these children, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which is a complete reversal of the way that the the world looked at children. Um, tons of reasons for that. Um, I t talked about how you know people didn't tend to get too attached to children because mm -hmm. uh, they didn't. Many of them just didn't survive because mm -hmm. it was life was hard, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and we didn't really understand childhood and, you know, you can go back and look at some like old paintings, mm -hmm. like Victorian era, where they just have these paintings of these, they're just little adults because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't understand that children were different and they didn't understand child development mm -hmm. and, and adolescence mm -hmm. or any of that. And so, um, so Jesus actually elevates children and welcomes them and, and, and is protective of them. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's an important cue for us as a church to see how, how God views children and how uh, we're called to, um, to do that. And in his book, Faithful Presence, uh, David Fitch talks about um, presence with children, mm -hmm. discipleship of children is, is, is a sacrament on the level of communion and baptism, mm -hmm. that this is a place that we should expect to see the presence of Christ mm -hmm. and we should extend the presence of Christ. Christ um, by, um, you know, both within the church and in our communities by caring for, defending, mm -hmm. protecting, discipling young people. And mm -hmm. so that was the heart of it. And so that's what we see in Jesus. And, um, you know, one of the things I really wanted our church to understand is when we do powerhouse and we do youth ministry, it's not daycare so mm. that the adults, you know, the parents can have mm -hmm. their time. Um, no, it's, it's, developmentally appropriate um, uh, discipleship, and mm. it matters as much as what's happening in our service. Mm. And so, um, you know, there was a bit of a call to action with, hey, in what way are you investing in the lives of young people? And and Pastor Becca and, and Eugenia should never ha uh, be lacking volunteers mm. because we should value this so much as a church that mm. people will say, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll do my part. And so uh, that's kind of where we concluded with that, with just that kind of invitation to, to see how, how each of us in our own way might... Um, live that out and see the presence of Christ with our young people mm -hmm. and, and, and help uh, extend that um, in their lives and in the lives of kids in our community. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that was the gist of it. Uh, I know you talked about life expectancy a, mm -hmm. a little bit, and so uh, I think that would have made you an, an actual old man. Yeah, I would be uh, ancient. And I would be middle-aged. Yeah, you'd be. Uh, and so that, Your be, time's coming. Yeah, <laughs> Ooh, wow. Uh, but, um, yeah, man, it, I, I really liked how you talked about, like, addressing the practical things yeah. uh, of, of youth ministry yeah. and, and children's ministry. Uh, was, was there anything that you had to cut out of your yeah. message for time or anything like that that you, you want to talk about here? Yeah, so... So there is a couple of things uh, that that I was like, you know what, um, you know, maybe there's a time and place for this some other time. I just don't have time for it this morning. But uh, my original introduction was something that I um, have about probably eight years ago read, and it was a um, it was a article in Harper's Monthly mm. uh, written by a um, I believe like a child psychologist or some sort of like. Somebody worked in the social work psychology mm -hmm. realm, and it was all about how the youth is a problem. They're mm. selfish. They're self-centered. They're um, they're you know addicted to drugs, and they'll do whatever it takes. They'll you know mm. uh, vandalize. They'll 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 they only look out for themselves. They're this. They're that. They're you know mm -hmm. all. They're just trashing the youth. Mm. Uh, the ironic part of the article it was written about. Um, it was written about the, the people, the generation that went and fought in World War II. Wow. Which is now called, mm -hmm. you know, by some, the greatest generation because mm -hmm. they saved the world. Mm -hmm. It is this American generation that saved the world from all of the evil uh, that was happening in World War II. 
And I just thought that was so funny mm -hmm. that like we do this perpetually, this cycle yeah. <laughs> of this next generation is going to tear us all down to hell. You mm -hmm. know, like it happens every single time. Mm -hmm. Like the hippies are now the boomers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like and yeah. and uh, I remember when growing up and I'm like on that cusp of Gen X and millennial and, mm -hmm. you know, Gen X is going to ruin this blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. and it, Every generation coming up is the worst and they're gonna ruin society. And so I think that's really important for us to remember uh, as, as a gray haired folk like myself <laughs> to say like, hey, they said that about us when we were coming up mm. and that it, it didn't make sense to us. It felt very like, you know, mm -hmm. kind of shocking to have that, that kind of label thrown on our mm -hmm. generation. And, and we better not do that to the next one coming up. And, mm. and I think mm. the, the bigger picture for us as Christians was to say that, um, uh, you know, when we see our young people trying, truly trying to faithfully follow Jesus mm -hmm. in their context, mm -hmm. um, we should not expect it to look like when we were coming up mm -hmm. as, as adolescents, mm -hmm. as teenagers, as college age people. We should not expect it because the world doesn't look anything like that. Mm -hmm. Everything's changed so much. So to expect the way that our kids are, are following Jesus to look exactly like it did when we were young is unreasonable. And mm -hmm. instead, we should be a part of that process of sitting with them, discerning with them, asking them questions and listening mm -hmm. to what they're facing. Then maybe, one, we'll have more unity across generations because mm -hmm. we're instead of judging, we're actually mm -hmm. learning, mm -hmm. right? And two, we might be able to then pray and discern with these young mm -hmm. folks about what, what that might look like then. Mm -hmm. If this is what you're experiencing, what does it look like to be faithful to Jesus in the mm -hmm. midst of it? Uh, and then the other thing I want to just throw out there for, for those who are, let's just say, my age or older. I don't know why everyone comes down so hard on younger generations when mm -hmm. they, this is the world we gave them. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you're a millennial uh, or a Gen Z you don't have any power to shape <laughs> the world. Like every person who has actual power and authority, every CEO for the most part, every you know political person is not a millennial or a Gen Z person. And like, we're like, oh, the world's going to hell. Look what these young people are doing. It's like, this is the world we're handing them. So let's take responsibility for that and recognize that like, mm. no, we have, every, every generation has challenges it faces and every generation has things that they, uh, bring to the world that are good and every and we also have disaster we bring upon the world so mm. so i think just in general to to not take that view of young people um mm. but instead to say like how do we actually partner together um to make a difference in our community how do we help each other um between generations look look at what it means um to walk faithfully with jesus in this mm. world as it exists not mm. lamenting the world that we had that we were comfortable with mm -hmm. Um, that doesn't exist anymore, but actually saying, okay, well, that's gone, and mm -hmm. I can either sit around and complain about how bad things have gotten, or mm -hmm. I can say, what does it look like to mm -hmm. do this together faithfully? Um, and if it sounds like I'm coming down on older people, just remember I'm in your bunch, right? I'm not a youth. Um, <laughs> but I do think that that's the way forward for us as, as Christians of whatever generation is to just yeah. truly be honest about what does it look like to follow Jesus in this context. No, I, I really appreciate you you talking about that. I, I really like how you address the cohesion of everything. I think it's really important for a church to have uh, both older generations yes. and younger generations. Yes. And speaking from the perspective as a young pastor, yeah. it's it was very difficult to get this opportunity. I'm right. very fortunate to, to have this opportunity to, to be a pastor mm -hmm. at, at my age. But it was, it was a struggle to get yeah. there uh, because I think older generations sometimes... Uh, are maybe, I would say, correct me if I'm wrong, a little afraid sure. of the young kids with the new ideas. Sure. Um, and uh, I think, of course, I, in, in my youth, came across yeah. as a little arrogant. Sure. And I, I can speak to the younger generations and say, hey, <laughs> you're you're still pretty young yeah. compared to most people. I've been where you yeah. are. I am where you are. You don't have it all figured out. Yeah, your zeal um, is outpacing your wisdom. And right. that's fine. We need the zeal, but <laughs> mm -hmm. we need the wisdom, too. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that's why cohesion is yes, so important. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And so yeah. the, the youth bring innovation. Mm -hmm. The older generations yeah. bring wisdom. And it's so important yeah. to have that mesh together. So. Yeah, and I think, too, um, one of the things, it's not just we're scared because we don't understand all of the context. 
Um, mm -hmm. I think there's also a, a feeling of like, are we going to get displaced by this younger generation? Mm -hmm. And um, while that's understandable, I also think like, I don't think the younger generation seeks to push us out. Mm -hmm. I think they just want a seat at the table. Yeah. And um, and so if, if we can have that seat at the table open, they're not trying to take my seat. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to have a seat. And I mm -hmm. think that's really good because, again, they bring something to the table that I will miss. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and so I, I think that's, you know, I've been a part of, you know, this is the third church that I've been full time on staff with mm -hmm. um, in my adult life. And um, every, every one of those churches, uh, I, well, I can't speak to FCC, I've only been here two years, and I think that we're, we're, we are really trying to do this multi-generational thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely the effort there, and we're mm -hmm. going to learn how to do it better over time. Mm -hmm. But my two previous churches, there was absolute like, we've got to reach young people, we've got to reach young people. We don't have any of them here at this table having this conversation because right. <laughs> we don't want to listen to them, mm -hmm. but we've got to reach young people. And I just mm -hmm. thought, like, I always said that, like, you know, and, and sometimes there was an arrogance, even from, like, younger pastors. Mm -hmm. I remember a younger pastor because I just said, hey, if we're trying to reach young people, maybe let's get some young people in here and help them figure out um, – what would that look like for them to reach their friends? Or yeah. what what can we do to make this a place that's welcoming for them? Mm. And this guy, he was younger than me. Mm -hmm. um, he was just like, well, they don't know what they need. And I was like, what? <laughs> that was very weird. It was, yeah. it was just, it, And it was spiritually condescending. It wasn't mm -hmm. like just generationally condescending. It was like, mm -hmm. well, they're young and immature and maybe don't even have a relationship with Jesus. So how can they possibly teach us anything? And I'm mm -hmm. like... All right. Well, I guess we're just not going to be a church that reaches young people if that's our posture. Right. And so I think that's a big part of it too. What's our posture going to be? Is it mm -hmm. is it one of welcome? Is it one of hey, you got a seat at the table? You mm -hmm. you get to have the microphone every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, that that's important for us as a church. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, just to take that like I'm not threatened by you as a young pastor. I you have something you bring to the table, so bring it. Like mm -hmm. we we each have our role to play, and mm -hmm. I think that's hopefully how we can. Continue yeah. moving forward as a church. Yeah. yeah, and I, as a young pastor, have so much that I don't know, and so I really appreciate having older pastors to tell me what I don't know, yeah. and, uh, and and help yeah. me grow as a as a pastor. And so. you'll get to my age and realize, oh, I really don't know anything. <laughs> like the more I know, the more I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for for sitting down and, and addressing some of these things. Uh, we are actually going to take a break from our midweek mashup for a little while because FCC is celebrating 50 Woo! years as a church. Yep. Uh, and so all of our studio production focus is going to shift yep. to that uh, for the next month or so. And then we will resume our midweek mashup. Uh, and we're excited to sit down and, and talk about some of these things. Uh, but we hope that you enjoy our Preacher's Choice series. Yeah. Uh, we're really excited about it. Uh, hope to sit down maybe with some of the pastors after the fact and, and talk about uh, each of these things individually. But yep. each of these Messages are individually based. They don't fall under an umbrella. Uh, and so what you're hearing from each of these pastors is whatever is important yep. and prevalent uh, in, in their lives to them, what they've been praying and hearing from God. And so I really encourage you to continue to, to interact with this series, whether in person or online. So thank you so much for joining us, and we will catch you in the next Midweek Mashup. May your midweeks be mashed up. <laughs> That was my attempt at a joke. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs>